if you feel overwhelmed by all the things you have to do right now, and maybe you're even losing it with your kids, yelling, screaming, and then probably feeling totally horrible about it, know that you're not alone. Motherhood can be just so incredibly lonely and overwhelming, and when you're trying to do it alone, it feels like you're the only person that's going through it. That's why we created the free Happy Mom Summit. Let me just add, free third annual Happy Mom Summit. I love it. You get to experience five days of inspiration, fun, connections, and practical strategies that are going to help you yell less. Find more patience. And this one, totally my favorite, organize your time. And we have so much fun for you. It's like hanging out with you and me like every day, every morning we're in there in the group. And I look forward to this week all year. It is so much fun. We have over like $2,500 in prizes. It's all about connecting, meeting new people. And seriously, you you just, you can't lose. Yep. And officially it starts March 4th, but you can go sign up now. And the fun has already begun in our online group. So sign up now for your free ticket. Yes, you heard that right. It is totally free, man. Just visit us at register.happymomsummit.com. But you're also going to want to grab that VIP pass. Yep, grab that right after because you can get all the presentations right now and you can get over $1,000 worth of bonuses from our speakers. Plus, you get to join me and Bree and Balance VIP for a month. I mean, this is the best. You can't lose. Go and sign up, register.happymomsummit.com, and we will see you in there when we're trying to get out of burnout. First of all, it's not completely our fault. And no, you are not imagining things if you feel like you have all this pressure to get things done. Like that pressure is totally there. And it takes recognizing it to get through it. Welcome to the No Guilt Mom podcast. I am your host, Joanne Crone, joined here by the lovely Brie Tucker. Why, hello, hello, everybody. How are you? We have just started 2024 and already like we're feeling it. We feel we feel the burnout. We feel the mental load. We feel everything just kind of weighing down upon us. So we wanted to bring you this episode about how do I know if I have burnout? And we're going to be really vulnerable and talk about our own burnout and how we've gotten through it or what we're doing currently to do it. And we hope you find a lot of support and love in this episode. And yeah. Before we get into it, though, we have a quick favor to ask of you. Can you rate and review us, please, on Apple Podcasts? It would mean the world to us, and it helps the No Guilt Mom podcast get out to more moms who need this comfort, who need this information and need to know that they're not alone because we truly want you to prioritize yourself and your well-being, and that's what makes you a better parent, not doing all these extra things and checklists. So with that, we're going to get into burnout right now. Let's get on with the show. You want mom life to be easier. That's our goal too. Our mission is to raise more self-sufficient and independent kids and we're going to have fun doing it. We're going to help you delegate and step back. Each episode, we'll tackle strategies for positive discipline, making our kids more responsible and making our lives better in the process. Welcome to the No Guilt Mom podcast. One of our first episodes, Brie, was with Dr. Cheryl Ziegler, and she wrote the book Mommy Burnout. And It was a book that touched us so much. I remember reading it and just crying through some of the chapters because they, she described situations that we both have been through. Right. I think that that was a huge thing. Like, first of all, I love, love, love mommy burnout. Can't say enough good things about the book. If you haven't read it, go and get it because she talks about this, again, this feeling of that overwhelm and kind of like doom and gloom and like, I just can't shake why I can't shake this. And she's able to articulate like how it's mommy burnout. Plus there's like a bunch of different types of it, but how burnout like affects us on a, on a regular basis. And it, I love names. I love putting names to things because it makes me feel like I'm not crazy. When there's no name for something, I'm always like, okay, it's just Bree's weirdness. But yeah, it makes me feel like I'm not crazy. I'm not alone when there is a name to it. So burnout it is. Was there like a name of burnout that like you really identified with when reading the book? 
Do you remember one off the top of your head? Not off the top of my head. If I had researched better, I would uh, have had that ready. But there were several of them that I remember. I was like, oh, that sounds like me. Oh, that sounds like me. Oh, that sounds like me. Yeah. Like I always know burnout, if you're suffering from burnout, usually irritability is a big sign. Mm -hmm. Like the little things bother you. I know that when I'm burnt out, I will get so snippy with people. I'll also get really down on myself. That is how my burnout shows up. Like if the voice in my head starts coming out and starts telling me how I'm a horrible person and, oh, I made this mistake and, oh, I made this mistake and, oh, Joanne, like, how could you do that? Or how could you be so stupid? I'm like, "Mm, check. I'm tired. (laughs) Well, I think that's a big, so like, that's a big factor, like being able to be aware of what's going on. So for me, the the biggest aha I I think I probably had was I'm a fairly optimistic, rosy glass kind of person that like things are always going to be looking up, going to be looking better. And when I cannot and I struggle to find anything good that's going on or anything good to look forward to, that's when I'm like, all right, yeah, I'm definitely. And and with me, I have my own mental health to to go with also like I've had depression before but there's a difference between depression and burnout and that's that's a big difference there too like I can tell when it's definitely like burnout like I could be like yep I've got this stress factor going on and I've got this stress factor going on it's definitely leading me towards this area of burnout plus also I feel like there's small areas where like when you're away from the stressors where you start to feel like a little bit more light Mm-hmm. That's also another thing I think that could is is helpful for me when I'm looking at it going like, okay, yeah, it's definitely burnout rather than depression or the fact that I just need to redecorate my house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it, like it, it's really hard to tell because we get fed this line that we should be optimistic or we should be positive all the time or, oh, you should just manage your time better. That's what you need. Oh, you mean like – you mean like our our, tox, our toxic gratitude or toxic positivity episode that we had that played recently? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you need to be thankful for everything. But it's, Thankful, thankful. It gets to the point where we start gaslighting ourselves. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and we neglect to really figure out the reason behind the burnout when we do that. Because I, I liken it to – I've been reading so many great books lately. One of them was Burnout by Emily and Amelia Nagoski which described the situation of a woman who like she did not know her own body signals to go to the bathroom anymore because oh wow yeah well she well she was so like stressed and burnt out like it became a bowel impaction like and oh, she had to go to the no. emergency room describing this woman oh. not the authors but it it was one of those things where her self-care was so put on the back burner because she was caring for everybody else that yeah. it took like it, it went to this dire health situation which needed attention. And she talked they talk about this and the progression of this woman because when she did have the bowel impaction, she then had to retrain her bowels to go to the bathroom. <laughs> like God, it's just, oh my God! It seems like a horrible, humiliating situation, right? Like horribly humiliating. But when oh she had this, she then had to rely on other people to do stuff. And I think, like as women, we feel like we can't rely on other people to do stuff. Like it's our own self worth on the line if we have to ask for help, if we have to like step back. And when this woman had to step back. One day at the kitchen counter, her husband's like, oh, my gosh, I haven't seen you smile like this like recently. And she's like, yeah, I guess so. Like, I just feel lighter and I feel better. And I'm like, and I when I read that, I'm like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. Like, I could so feel that as well, because I've been in that situation where I have ulcerative colitis. I was diagnosed five years ago, but when I was first experiencing symptoms and I had no idea what was going on. I was incredibly tired all the time. I had these horrible stomach aches that I didn't know how to control. I thought they were food related. They weren't food related because I was testing all the foods. I was scared. I had something like cancer or something that was incurable. Like my whole mental psyche was just preoccupied with this along with the pain. And so that when I 
I, I was really taken down with it where every afternoon I was on the couch in a ball for like two hours every afternoon trying to deal with these stomach symptoms, trying to like figure out, you know, what was I doing wrong that right. was making them happen. And then when I finally got diagnosed, um, it was like all of this pressure was off of me now. It wasn't my fault. And I needed to also step back and look at things. Whereas that situation wasn't so much like my family stepping in or taking things off of me, but that was more of my own things being taken off of myself, like my own pressure being taken off of myself. Like during that time, I had no creativity. I, I would like watch Netflix like for hours a day when I was supposed to be working because I it didn't, nothing occurred to me of what to do. I had no extra brain power. And when that mm -hmm. big stressor was removed, that's when everything started coming back and looking happy again. But it, yeah. it takes having it removed to even realize that you're in burnout sometimes. Right. It does. It's kind of like that whole, uh, yeah, like you've dug yourself into a hole. Mm -hmm. and, and and it's not, a, and I, I hate saying that actually. I shouldn't say you've dug yourself into a hole. It's like you fell into a hole. Yeah. And you can't, you you. Yeah, it's it's about trying to get out of it to get to a better place because yeah, that's those are all the things that happen, exhaustion and like and when you are just every ounce of brain power is just and every ounce of energy is just to make it through the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't have anything extra to give to anybody. Yeah, and women so. are more likely to experience this as men because there are so many societal expectations on women to put themselves before others. And so women will like burn themselves up to keep others warm. And it's so common, like so common. Well, because that's what we're supposed to do or else we're not a good mom. We're not loving. We're not caring. We're not attentive, which those can all be in a whole nother podcast episode. I know, but that, <laughs> I mean, we need to realize that and that push on us to know like this isn't just us. It's not like our fault that we're burnt out. But it's all of the cultural and societal expectations on us. So there are ways out of burnout. And uh, we're going to get into what we've tried right after this break. This message is sponsored by EveryPlate. Anyone who knows me knows there are two things that happen with me. I'm always trying to save money and I am always running behind. It's 7.58 and I'm on my way out the door to an 8 a.m. meeting. But that is why we partnered with EveryPlate. EveryPlate has helped me save time with less trips to the grocery store and meals ready in six simple steps. I absolutely love how they plan delicious meals and send me the pre-portioned ingredients right to my door so I can spend less time planning, shopping, and cooking and all while saving big bucks. I, too, have better things to worry about, Brie, than what's for dinner. Every plate provides plenty of delicious variety. I'm talking so yummy. Like 26 tasty and affordable recipes that start as little as $1.49 a meal and new recipes every week. This week, we're trying the bacon and Gouda smothered chicken. Like, I'm salivating. I'm salivating already. You know me in food. And I really love that I can customize my recipes by swapping proteins and sides or even adding a protein to a veggie dish. Hey, Joanne, do you got a buck? Um, yeah. Well, then you can get steak for life. It seems unbelievable to me, but you can add a 10-ounce ranch steak to your weekly order for just $1 a box with your active subscription. Get a meal starting at just $1.49 plus a dollar steaks for life by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and entering code 49NGM. Subscription must be active to qualify and redeem $1 steak. You heard that right. Get a meal starting at just $1.49 plus $1 steaks for life by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and entering code 49NGM. Subscription must be active to qualify and redeem that $1 steak. I've been looking for simple ways to form healthy habits and get the nutrients my body needs even on really busy mornings. And lately, I've been feeling pretty stressed and sluggish, so that's why I decided to give AG1 a try. Not only does AG1 deliver my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more, but it's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. It's just one scoop mixed in water once a day 
every day. And it makes me feel strong and energized and ready to face the day uh, in addition to my cup of coffee. And that is why we've partnered with AG1. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com forward slash NGM. That's drinkag1.com forward slash NGM. Check it out. So some things to realize when we're trying to get out of burnout is first of all, like it's not completely our fault. And no, you are not imagining things if you feel like you have all this pressure to get things done. Like that pressure is totally there and it takes recognizing it to get through it. Because I, I mentioned the book Burnout and they have human giver syndrome in that book. And human giver syndrome is when you feel like you have to give everything of yourself as the human giver so that the human beings can be. And in this scenario, human beings are always the kids and the men and the human givers who give everything of themselves are the women. And it exists. It exists. So how can we fight back against it? Bree, like what have you tried with your burnout? When I'm going through it, like I'm, I try unplugging myself, like not having my phone around because again, most of the things that are stressing me out are, you know, work, family, uh, you know, it's something that, that my phone is going to connect me to. So I try to like separate from that. I also try really hard to remember to at the, and I, and I like this, it's at the end of the day, very end of the day before we go to bed my husband would practice gratitude and would like share three things he's grateful for from the day. And I would try to do that. And I wouldn't be hard on myself if my gratitude was like, I made it through the day without yelling at anybody. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like whatever it is, like trying to find something positive to remind myself what that feeling is of having the positivity. And then just trying to take time away from the things that are causing me stress. So, and I know that that sounds like some people are probably listening to this right now and being like, well, the things that cause me stress are my family. So how exactly am I supposed to leave my family? Well, maybe that's like go for a self-care day. Go to the movies by yourself. Go get, you know, get, go to a spa, go shopping, go to a park and just sit and enjoy the quiet, <laughs> whatever it is. But like try to extract yourself from those things that are, that are causing you to have so much stress and burnout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think like unplugging is good, but it's so hard to do because I don't know about you, but like my mind is constantly on things. Like sometimes it's better for me from a relaxation standpoint. We were just talking about this this morning. If I just handle the thing I'm anxious about rather than try to unplug from it, like I I can't stop thinking about it. I mean, do you feel that way with like things on yours? So my thinking about it is like it the way mine happens is it'll wake me up from a sleep uh-huh. and then I can't go back to sleep. But in the moment, I have to like I don't I don't have it there 24 I I can leave it. I can literally take my phone and I swear to god, I think sometimes I do that like uh, like subconsciously. I'll put my phone somewhere and I'll be like, "Where the hell did I put my phone?" And it'll take me like half an hour to find it. Like, "Where did I put my phone? Why is it in this random nook?" In the dining room. Oh, probably because subconscious Brie was like, let's just stick this here and let you walk away for a little while to have some air. <laughs> like, no dings. Because when the phone is there, any ding immediately makes the blood the blood pressure spike because you're like, oh, it's another thing. Like, Because when you're at burnout, you have no, you have no ability to process any more stressors. Mm-hmm. Everything that happens is a level five catastrophe. Yeah. And... And your body cannot keep going at that rate. So you're exhausted, but you can't go to sleep because your mind won't stop thinking about the things. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So for me, I I do have to try to escape from it. I have to. Because a lot of times the things that are stressing me out, I don't have the answer to. Mm-hmm. And thinking about it over and over and over again is not good for my mental health. That doesn't work well for me. Yeah. I so. I sometimes like I don't get stressed out by the things I don't have the answer to yet. I I've learned to be like, oh well, that one's that's coming. That's coming later. Something like that. I get stressed out by other people getting stressed out. 
I'll, I'll get stressed. Uh, if like I see other people stressed out, I will try to alleviate their stress. That is something that I like, it's a natural inclination for me. And it's not the best thing because it means that other people's emotions really tie onto my emotions. And it's not anything that other people can hide at all. But like just a situation a few weeks ago, um, I was trying to get to the bottom of why I was so angry about the situation. And I was talking to my mm-hmm. husband about it. And I'm like, I'm just, I'm just so angry. Like, I don't even want to spend time around this person. And we talked about it for a while. And he's like, well, like, what's the root cause? What, what's the reason that, why are you so upset? Like, what are you thinking about? Mm-hmm. And it took me a while. And I was like, I think it's because I can't do anything about it. Like, this person wants me to you do. You can't s- fix it. Yeah, I can't yeah. fix it. Like, this person's fix is not something that I think I should do or think I can do. And that is what got me really, really upset. Like, that I can't, I can't fix it. There's nothing I can do for this situation. It was a situation totally with the other person that was, was things and how they perceived the situation. And I couldn't mm-hmm. do anything. And that made me upset, really upset. And it made me upset that I was expected to fix the situation too, I think. Um, but I couldn't. And sorry to be so obtuse there, but <laughs> we have to. No, there. I mean. Unwill. <laughs> It is what it is. Like, and I think like you just gave a good example of something that, you know, I'm not sure if it's female giver syndrome that you just gave an example of necessarily, but it's definitely something that I think a lot of moms struggle with is the whole how we take on everybody else. Mm -hmm. Like, I think I was just telling you earlier in the week, we've had a few things happen in our family. Like we have, my nephew had a mental health crisis that happened that caused some, um, some medical intervention needed and then we're recording this right after the the Super Bowl and you know emotions were high at, at a Super Bowl gathering I was at and there was a couple people that that clashed and I was stuck right in the middle of it I felt nobody put me there but emotionally I was in the middle of it so then I'm like already hurting about the family member that was having their issue that happened the day before I'm hurting about both people that are fighting at the Super Bowl and then two here separate we are, fights days, you were doing with the Super Bowl. Yeah. Two separate fights. Yes. Yeah. Two separate things. And then here we are like days later. They just had the Kansas City Chiefs shooting at the parade. Yeah. And I actually like know somebody who knows the people that were hurt yeah. and I'm hurting for them. And I'm like, and I don't even like directly know the people. It's like a friend of a friend knew the person. And so my heart is breaking. But that's your and, like, hometown. So, like, Right. It is. It is. But I'm just saying like we're taking on all of this. It just keeps dumping it and dumping it and dumping it. And you can only hold so much. Mm -hmm. So it's hard when you when you uh, take on that emotional turmoil from other people. I, I, I I'm wondering who else out there has this feeling that you're just like, yeah, that must I think that's what it is. Like it just weighing you down there. It does. It's like an anchor. It totally pulling does. Pulling you down. It weighs you down. It's one of the reasons like I can't watch much news and I feel like I'm a horrible person because all of this stuff happening in Gaza. <laughs> 2020 burn us out, man. Um, but in Ga- it did. like in Gaza right now with the genocide going on, which is yep. horrific, like horrific, brought to tears like of Everyone who are losing their family members and their children, and it's the most awful, awful situation. And there's so much going on that you feel like you need to shield yourself from it just to keep functioning in your own day-to-day life. And if you feel that way right now, like you are not a horrible person at all. You are doing what it takes right now to survive for yourself. And that needs to be okay. So after this yeah. break, we're going to talk about what it feels like to get out of burnout and how you know you may be turning the corner. Are you looking for something to listen to with your whole family? Then check out Six Minutes, produced and created by Gen Z Media. With over 200 twisty, cliffhanger-filled episodes, Six Minutes tells the story of 11-year-old Holiday who was pulled from the icy waters with no memory of who she is or where she came from. 
Three years ago, Brindley Pasternak helped the Anders family uncover the truth about Holiday's past. Now she'll need them to help her find the truth about hers. In Six Minutes Out of Time, the long-awaited sequel, Cyrus Anders is found unconscious near the mysterious Elixir Academy in Florida, and Brindley learns the school may have a shocking connection to her missing mother. Dive in now and get the most downloaded family audio adventure in history. Follow Six Minutes wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen early and ad-free with the GZM family subscription. Hey there, I'm Debbie Reber, the founder of Tilt Parenting and the author of the book, Differently Wired. The mission of Tilt is to change the way neurodivergence, whether that's having a learning disability, having ADHD, being gifted, autistic, or some combination of all of the above is perceived and experienced so differently wired kids and the parents like us raising them can truly thrive. On the Tilt Parenting Podcast, I get to talk with authors, therapists, educators, and parenting experts who are committed to this mission. I ask the questions my listeners are most curious about when it comes to supporting our kids. And in turn, my guests share strategies for challenges, out-of-the-box ideas for navigating school, best practices for therapies, tips for advocating, and so many thoughtful insights on what it really takes to help our kids grow up feeling seen and respected so they can create awesome lives for themselves. I know that raising a differently wired kid can feel overwhelming and isolating, but I promise you, you are not alone and it can feel so much better. If you're on this parenting journey, come listen to Tilt Parenting. Together, we can shift this paradigm and show up for our exceptional kids with hope, possibility, and joy. Okay, so with burnout, the things like Brie does, she unplugs at the end of the day, practices gratitude. I cut myself off from all the news because I just can't handle it anymore. Uh, Something else that I find helps with my burnout is if I do something called completing the stress cycle, which is just exercising. Um, I don't exercise for the sake of looking good. I exercise for the sake of getting rid of stress and uh, making my body stronger so it doesn't hurt. (laughs) Because, you know... 42. That's a good reason. (laughs) Those are good reasons. Oh, I just saw like a really good meme the other day. It had uh, Johnny Cash. It's like when you exercise over the age of 40. I hurt myself today. Today. I believe it. (laughs) I believe it. I feel like I'm about four weeks into my strength training routine and I Mm -hmm. feel really good, like standing up stronger, not as much pain in my shoulders and really energized by the entire thing. Pants are fitting looser, uh, which is great Yay! after Christmas. <laughs> I'm, oh, God, I know. I, I like I, We had an episode about the about the post-holiday blues. I forgot to add that one in there. The whole fact that like, nothing fits. Nothing fits. Yeah, like I am not. I, I don't weigh myself because I get psycho about my weight because of thank you 90s and body image issues. <laughs> But Kate Moss. Oh gosh, it's I can't. I Not can't her even. fault. Not her fault. But <laughs> she was a an epitome of standards people could not live up to. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Go on. No, but <laughs> it's true. And like after the holidays, I found that I have a love for Seas Candies little butterscotch chocolate covered butterscotch. Oh my gosh, they just melt in your mouth. My mom got me a whole thing of like the caramel selection from Seas Candies, and those little suckers. Mm-hmm. So good. Those are your new favorite. So good. Um, They will not be coming back in the house because I eat them so much that it flares up my UC and then bad things happen. So not that anyone oh. needed that graphic interpretation. I'm that's sorry. Like, that's like me eating like a cheese quesadilla. It tastes so good. Oh, so my God. My stomach hurts. <laughs> However, I feel less bad about graphic interpretations after listening to the recent Armchair Expert episode with Jason Bateman. Um, because I did not hear that one. Oh, they discuss wiping strategies right in the first 10 minutes of the episode. I know. I know. Yeah. If you want to feel better about what we talk about on this podcast, go into that episode. Oh, God. God. <laughs> You're just like, guys, not my can we stop this, please? Can we just stop this? <laughs> like, I just imagine Monica in that situation being like, mm, okay, let's, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> It brings us back to kind of like burnout because when you're coming out of burnout, you can start to see the joy and the light again in things and ideas come back, creative ideas come back and things are funny. Mental health habits come back. Like I always say, I'm in burnout if I'm neglecting everything. Like if I'm eating just junk food all the time and not exercising, then I really need to watch myself because it means some mental health is struggling right there. 
Yeah, I could see that. That's that for me. That is the skipping of lunches and uh, skipping of walks. Yeah, like I have definitely found that I do. I really love the neighborhood I live in. I moved here, and part of it was I thought it was a beautiful neighborhood with like little water features and lots of trees, which is rare. Mm -hmm. Trees in Phoenix, Arizona. Although we have lots of lakes, surprisingly, man-made. But do <laughs> well. I would say, yeah, we do. We do have several lakes for being in the middle of the desert. That is true. We also have lakes that are glorified ponds. They are people like to call lakes. But that's not what you were talking I about. Call I call it a that. lake. So, but <laughs> it's a pond. Oh well, there, there's yeah. So like the neighborhood I'm in has it's the lakes. Yeah, but we have two very large glorified ponds. Mm-hmm. So I, I digress. I like the neighborhood. I like being able to walk around in it. And when I find myself avoiding going on the walks, yeah, that's. That's not a great thing. So I I know that pushing myself out there, which I also remember Dr. Cheryl Ziegler had suggested, like going out for walks can really help your mental health and kind of help boost you out there. Uh, yeah, I think it's a mix of like what you were saying, like the exercising, like because it even though it's not high impact and it's not doing a whole lot for you in the, I would say in the strengthening or long run side of things, it's at least some form of exercise. And like you said, vitamin D, fresh air, change of scenery and Chances are good what's outside isn't what's stressing you out and causing you burnout. Yeah. So again, you can unplug without necessarily having to really unplug. Yeah. So No, it's true. Yeah. And it, it also, like, when you take the chance, when you take the opportunity to get away from your stressors, you realize, like, how many expectations are on you and how many expectations you put on yourself. Because that is usually the cause of my burnout is these expectations I put on myself. And it's hard to talk to my husband about it because men don't have the same expectations as women. Like they're not, it's just, it's not. And people will say, and men will give well-meaning advice. Oh, just go relax. Just go relax. I'm sorry. But like our brains don't work that way. And it's not because of a like female versus male difference. It's because of how men and women are different. Like they're socialized differently. So it's like, being treated differently your entire life has changed your brain shape and it's changed the connections you make and it's changed everything so that just sitting down to relax isn't really a reasonable thing to ask. True. And a lot of times it isn't like, yeah, yeah. There are so many times I can think of where it's just like been like the question of well, what do you need? And I'm like, I don't know what I need. I don't know. I don't. Like when has I anyone tell really you asked you what you needed growing up or anything like that? Like you don't get asked it. I could ask more. I could ask more of it now by my husband. Yeah. He he really does try to help, but sometimes in a, a, right, like sometimes even just being asked that question, what do you need, is even too much. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, so now you're asking me to stop, write everything down that's going through my brain, and then figure out what I can dole out to you and what I can't dole out to you. Like that's just it's. It's that whole thought process of the, like, where we get upset sometimes, like, why do I have to tell you what I need? Mm -hmm. Like, it's, and I'm not saying it's fantastic. I love it. Somebody asks. Mm -hmm. Like you said, most of our lives growing up, nobody really asked us what we needed. And a lot of us in relationships, nobody ever asked us what we needed. So I love being asked. But sometimes when you're already in that burnout state, yeah, being asked is just one more thing you have to figure out. No, sometimes so. I have a fantasy of just leaving for like weeks on end and have everyone figure it out themselves. Like, oh, do you ever have that I fantasy? remember. I always have that fantasy. Um, okay. Stressed. I don't right now. Yeah. But it's funny you bring that up because, you know, I'm a, uh, I was a psych major in college mm-hmm. and um, one of my classes, I think my first ab psych class I ever had to take, our professor talked about how there is a psychological break you can have and it's like disassociative amnesia. Mm-hmm. And she talked about how that was her dream. She desperately wanted to have disassociative amnesia. I think that's the right phrase. I hope it is. Because here is exactly what you said. She goes, basically, you just forget about the parts of your life that are stressful. That's awesome. So like you can get in the car and you can be like, you know what? I'm going to go live in Las Vegas. You remember your bank account number. (laughs) You remember the phone. You remember all your nice clothes. You remember how to get in your car. But you don't remember your family. Yeah, don't remember that stressful job and you don't remember the bills you got to pay. You legitimately don't remember them. They legitimately leave your brain. Amnesia, poof, it's gone. And she's like, that's my dream. One day I'll get that. <laughs> it's funny though that like we're, we're pushed to that, that that's our dream. Like, But you're right. I think, oh yeah, like I, I, so many people, my one, I, I'm going to say somebody very, very close to me 
not you, has told me that is their daydream all the time to just be able to just get in the car and be like, peace out, suckers. <laughs> just go away for a few weeks and let everybody else figure it out because they are the, they are the, I don't know what to call it, but they are the one thing that holds their whole family, not the glue. They are bigger than glue mm-hmm. and all that weight oh, that yeah. they have to carry of everybody's emotional well being. Mm-hmm. And I don't think anyone knows how much we carry other than other moms. Which is why having these breaks, like, okay, so first of all, you can't just keep running away from burnout because mm-hmm. burnout's going to keep finding you if you try to just just do the whole, like, you know, disassociative amnesia thing. It's going to come back and bite you. Yeah. So figuring out healthy ways to deal with it, mm-hmm. to work through it so that you are no longer in burnout. And we're so to, to be clear on that, we are not saying healthy ways to deal with burnout so that you can deal with the burnout. No, no, no. We're talking about getting through it yeah, and not having the burnout anymore. And then once you're there doing things to help keep your mental health in a good place, one of which is doing things for yourself. Yeah. Without all of those stressors around. Yeah. Like I've never been on a girl trip, a girl's trip until like 2021 when we went somewhere, we went to Europe and it's like, it's been fantastic. I'm like, where have I, why haven't I been doing this more? And how quote unquote irresponsible are we on the girls trips? It's pretty nice. (laughs) We're like eating peanut M&Ms for like our lunch and dinner. It's like, can we have another Paloma? Oh wait, two Palomas? That'd be great. (laughs) That'd be great. It's, it just, it's really nice to be, and like, I remember too, like telling our friend Shana that I didn't like Disneyland and it broke her heart a little, broke her heart a little. And she's like, you've never gone with just adults, though, have you? And I'm like, no, I haven't. And then I I did get forced to go on a trip with just adults one time. Oddly enough, it was a work trip. But I digress. <laughs> you got to hang out with whoever you wanted to. And it was the most fun I've ever had at Disneyland. Oh, yeah. Who knew Who it knew? could be fun and not have to wait in lines and deal with fights. And I don't want to go on that. And he touched me. And I don't like that food. Yeah, like, that's not it's a possible. Way to, yeah. yeah. I know. I know. So, I feel the same yeah. way about Disneyland. I want to go on my own. <laughs> <laughs> because it's it's like it is so much on us so much on us so it's no wonder like we're getting burnt out it's no wonder so if you're burnt out right now yeah know that you're not alone you're in happy company here and the first step through it is just to recognize it Re- recognize how many expectations yep. are on you and that it's not your fault yep. that you have these expectations they're put on women and then figure out how, what like relieves a little bit of the stress symptoms because once you're able to relieve a little bit of them, then you're able to start tackling the root causes. But if you're totally burnt out with stress, you you can't tackle anything in that current state. It's like your mind goes on shutdown and everything will just piss you off and you'll want to drive off and be, peace <laughs> out, suckers. Exactly. <laughs> we need to make that. A, that needs to be our new sticker. Yeah, peace with a mom with like her hair <laughs> and a convertible flowing go driving into the sunset pace out and <laughs> all of our daydreams that would be great. yes yes <laughs> well until next time remember the best mom is a happy mom so take care of you and we'll talk to you later thanks for stopping by I'm Margaret. And I'm Amy. And together we host the podcast, What Fresh Hell? Laughing in the Face of Motherhood. Margaret, I would say you're sort of a where are my keys kind of mom. Correct. Sometimes a where are my kids kind of mom. (laughs) Well, you're Amy more of a we were supposed to leave 35 seconds ago, mom. I mean, touche. In each episode of What Fresh Hell, we come at a topic from our usually completely opposite perspectives. I bring the research. And I bring kind of the gimlet eye. Like, is that research really going to work, people? And almost 10 million downloads later, we're still laughing. We also talk to experts in the parenting field, plus parents with stories we can all learn from. We make each other laugh, we challenge each other's assumptions, and we have what we think is the best parenting community on the internet. Check out What Fresh Hell? Laughing in the Face of Motherhood wherever you listen to podcasts.